gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about igneous rocks. We've already talked about sedimentary rocks, so this is the second of the classifications. Just to remind you, igneous are the most abundant type of rocks. These are considered primary rocks, and the source is either magma or lava. Sedimentary rocks are a thin veneer in oceanic or continental crusts and they're considered secondary rocks because they're formed from primary rocks. Metamorphic rocks have a proportion that is similar to that of igneous rocks, and they involve change of forms of igneous and sedimentary due to temperature, pressure, and chemical fluids. So they're also considered secondary rocks. The origin of igneous rocks means fire-formed rocks, so they crystallize from molten material. Igneous rocks are defined as the rocks formed through volcanic action or the rocks which are derived from a molten mass, which can be magma or lava. Magma is molten rock below the Earth's surface, and lava is molten rock that erupts onto the Earth's surface through a volcano or a crack or fissure. Volcanoes are gaps in the Earth's crust where molten rocks and other materials escape onto the Earth's surface. Magma is a molten mass that is comprised the most abundant elements on Earth, such as silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, hydrogen, and oxygen, where the silicate, or SiO2, is the most abundant of all. The temperature of magma is between 1,040 to 1,200 degrees Celsius. Rocks can be melted through heating, depressurization, increasing the water content of the rock or increasing the silica content of the rock. Cooling rates influence the texture of the igneous rock. If it has quick cooling, it has fine grains like you see in obsidian. If it has slower cooling, you get coarser grains like you see in basalt. Igneous rocks are classified on their texture and their composition. Igneous textures can include glassy, aphanitic, phaneritic, porphyritic, vesicular, and pyroclastic. Glassy textures mean that there was instantaneous cooling. Obsidian is volcanic glass. Aphanitic has a fine grain size, which means that the grains are less than one millimeter in size. These are the result of quick cooling and can include basalt, rhyolite, and andesite. Phaneritic textures have coarser grain sizes. You can see the grains, they're visible. So they range from one to 10 millimeters across. These are the result of slow cooling and include granite, diorite, and gabbro. Porphyritic texture has a mixture of grain sizes caused by a mixed cooling history. Slow cooling at first, followed by a period of somewhat faster cooling can prov provide this type of texture. Vesicular texture means that it contains tiny holes, called vesicles, which are formed due to gas bubbles in the lava or magma. Vesicular rocks are very, very porous and may resemble a sponge. They are commonly low in density and can float on water. Pumice and scoria are examples of those. Pyroclastic textures also are called fragmental textures because pieces of rock and ash come out of a volcano and get welded together by the heat. Volcanic tuff is made of volcanic ash, that's a type of pyroclastic rock, and volcanic breccia, which is what this is, contains fragments of fine-grained igneous rocks that are larger than the ash that's binding it all together. But primarily there are two main types of igneous rocks, volcanic or extrusive rocks and plutonic or intrusive rocks. Extrusive rocks form at the Earth's surface as the lava cools. Plutonic rocks form deep underground where the magma cools very slowly. So that phaneritic texture you're only going to see in a plutonic or intrusive rock. Okay, so that is it for igneous rocks. Make sure that you review the uh, types and which types of textures you find which examples. Because otherwise it will get a little confusing. If you have any questions, see me during office hours or feel free to send me an email. Have a great day.